Let's bring in tonight's political panel, Fox News contributor Leslie Marshall and former communications director for the National Republican Congressional Committee, Matt Gorman. Welcome to you both. Happy New Year to you both. Matt, I was watching Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez on a different network tonight, and she says what happened today shows that the Republicans do not have any faith in Kevin McCarthy. Your thoughts? Uh, well, it was an embarrassing day, and it was a chaotic day, to say the least. I mean, I know what it's like to work two years to finally take back the House, and this is your first day. We have an agenda to defund the IRS agents and the like, and this is what you're focused on. I mean, look, Kevin McCarthy's earned the right to lead this majority. There wouldn't be a majority if it wasn't for him. He raised a bulk of the money, recruited a bulk of the candidates, uh, and for it to devolve into this sideshow, which is really just mostly personal against him, it's really unfortunate we need to unite as a party. And some of these candidates, by the way, that he raised money for, as some point out, are some of the people who are voting against him right now who may not be in office without Kevin McCarthy. It's interesting, Leslie, because you listen to John Kennedy, the senator tonight, and Dan Crenshaw, the congressman from Texas, and their thing is, hey, hey, don't get this thing, you know, all blown out of proportion. Listen to them. Don't, don't, don't stab each other, okay? They'll get it worked out. They'll get it worked out. Um, there will be, then there will be some drama uh, for a while, and then we'll, hopefully we'll get down to business. Nobody should be panicking. This is, this is, and this is really an inside baseball D.C. swamp <laughs> kind of exercise in total BS. Yeah, BS that gets worked out, according to John Kennedy, but Democrats are enjoying this. Uh, yeah, I have popcorn, extra popcorn at the <laughs> house uh, right now. Yeah, sadly, I am. And I mean, Republicans would be doing the same thing if uh, this were my party. This is an embarrassment. This is in disarray. This is a fragmented um, house. And even when they do get a speaker, and eventually they will, mm -hmm. it most likely will be McCarthy, because I'm sure he's going to promise everything, including naming every child after mm -hmm. that he has in the future, after everybody who wants promises and money and committee appointments from him. Um, look. The, the problem here is that the American people put them in charge to get things done. And if you can't get this done, how are you going to get anything done? They have a very slim majority. They're very fragmented as a party. This more than proves it. I'm concerned as an American when they talk about divided yep. government. You have a divided house within a house, and that's the Republican Party. And some are saying it's beneficial in the long run of the Republican Party to be like that. I want to put this up in Wall Street Journal. Uh, the GOP Chaos Caucus returns, quoting stipulated. Representative Kevin McCarthy isn't everyone's ideal of a conservative speaker, but he has led the House GOP since 2019, raised oodles of money for November's midterms, and easily won a leadership vote last year, 188 to 31. So what they're saying here, Matt, is he really is the guy, and there doesn't seem to be a plan B if McCarthy is not the guy. Yeah, you see Jim Jordan with 20 votes, but, but really there doesn't seem to be a plan B behind that. No, because it's not about the next person in line, because if he gives in or, or if this plan succeeds and they get this scalp, so to speak, what's the stop the next person from having this happen to them in a month or two months? Uh, you know, having this out right now uh, is, I think, unfortunate, but at least we can kind of get it out of the way. If there's one thing that Nancy Pelosi taught Republicans is that united majorities are the ones that can succeed. Look at all she did last Congress with a very slim majority herself. Uh, and I think that is something we can learn from. And going forward, when we get this behind us, which we will, we have to unite. Though it might take a while, you go back to 1856, took 133 ballots, two months. And a lot of people say, Lester, that maybe the Democrats are the ones that put Kevin McCarthy in the speaker's chair because they just stopped showing up. After 15 or 20 of these, they stopped showing up, and that lowers the threshold from 218 down to where he can get that speakership. Thoughts on that? You're joking. No. <laughs> no, I know the numbers are there. No, Democrats, we're united. Okay. We're united to show up. We're not going to look, you know, they're not going to sit home and eat the popcorn that I'm going to eat. They're, they're going to show up certainly because they wouldn't want that to happen. And I mean, mm -hmm. you know, look, even more embarrassing for, you know, for McCarthy is, you know, Hakeem Jeffries has more votes than he does. Yeah, for the time being. But those votes could come in the next couple of days. We shall find out. Leslie Marshall, Matt Gorman, thank you both.